Want to know how to share storage and functionality between your facets in your diamond proxies? Find out in this video. Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What The Funk. In the last video, I showed you how to create diamond proxies, facets, and how to put them together using Remix and Looper. In this video, I'll show you how to create a bunch of different facets and show you how you can get them to share storage and functionality. Before we get started, if you're new, here at What The Funk, we talk about all things Web3 and blockchain development. If you like that sort of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. Also make sure to hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's dive into some code. All right, here in Remix, you can see I've already created a diamond contract and I've gone ahead and deployed it to the Rinkeby testnet and I've got it pulled up here in Looper. And so, as you can see, we've only got this main facet with all of our main functions and we don't have any other facets. So what we're gonna do is take the message facet that we created in the last video and split it up into two parts. The first facet is going to be able to set the message in storage, whereas the second facet will be able to read the facet from storage. Both of these facets are gonna be able to share storage using a library. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in Remix. So the first thing you wanna do, if you want to have facets sharing functionality in storage, you're gonna to wanna to create a library. And let's create a library file here in Remix. So I've got an empty library. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of the stuff that's required at the top. So here I've got an empty library. And the key to making these libraries work with your facets is to create a bunch of internal functions. So usually if you've got a library with some internal and external functions, what's going to happen is when you put this library on the blockchain, it's going to kind of exist as its own contract, so to speak. So it's gonna have its own address. But if you keep everything internal, it's actually going to become part of the bytecode of whatever facet you include it in. So first let's start by creating the storage layout. Remember in the last video, uh, we created a storage layout for the message facet so it can kind of manage its own storage. In this instance, we're going to have the storage layout set in the library. That way both facets know how to store and retrieve the data. So just as before, we've created a namespace with a basically a made up string. Uh, we defined the storage layout in a struct and we've created a function in order to retrieve the storage from that specific namespace position. Next, we're going to create a way to set the message using the storage that we just created. All right, we created the set message function and it's going to act just like it did in the last video. It's going to take a string as an argument and it's going to set that string in the local storage um, in the message variable that we created in the storage struct above. Now, the thing that's different about the last video is that this is an internal function and it's only gonna be called from any facet that uh, imports this library later. So when we create our new facets, we're going to import this library and use it that way. So this uh, is actually going to be incorporated as part of the bytecode of any facet that imports it uh, and it's going to be deployed along with it. Next, let's create the retrieve message function. And just like the last video, we retrieve the message from storage and uh, re return it right away. So we can do this all in one line and it looks pretty clean. Next, let's create a facet that simply just sets the message. And that's all the facet is responsible for. So this, I created a new file called write message facet. And let's just set everything we need at the top. Here I have an empty contract and you can probably guess what I'm about to do. First thing I'm going to do is import the library that we just created. Now that we have the library imported, let's create a function that actually uses it. So now we have a function called set message. It does basically the same thing as what's in the library, but we actually utilize the library under the hood to set the message to the actual storage slot. So here you can see we call message lib dot set message and we just pass along the message that's being called as an argument into the set message function of the library. The only thing different about this function is it's external and people can actually call it from the outside. So let's go ahead and compile this facet, deploy it, verify it, and add it to Looper. All right, I've gone ahead and deployed and verified my contract. I'm back in Looper. Let's go to the Upgrade Facet tab, paste in my address, 
fetch the info, select the message, and then add facet. All right, you can see that my facet has been added and it's right here. Let's go ahead and save a message. Click right, connect, select set message, and we're just gonna add what the funk, execute it, sign in my wallet. All right, supposedly it's set, but there's no way to actually read it. So let's go ahead and create a new facet that will use the same library and we can read and make sure that our message was actually set. So we'll go back to Remix. I've gone ahead and created a new facet called read message facet. Just like the last facet, I've added my compiler version and imported the message lib. So let's go ahead and implement the read function. So here you see I've implemented our function and all it does is call the message lib and the get message method and just returns the value returned from that. And so we can go ahead and compile, verify, and deploy this once again. So over here, I've gone ahead and added my read message facet the same way I did the write message facet. And you can see it's got a new contract with a get message method over here. So let's go ahead and read and see if we get the same value that we set in the last facet. Let's click read, select the get message method, click read again, and voila, you've got what the funk. And that's it. That's how easy it is to manage and share storage and functionality between facets in a diamond proxy. Hopefully this gives you some better understanding and helps you to better organize and implement your diamond proxy projects in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.